I remade my favorite game from the Amiga in Unity and I'm going to show you how I did it. So before we jump into Unity what we're going to need is to gather all of the sprites that we're going to be using. You can get sprites from just googling the name of your game and sprites or we can use a website called the Spriters Resource and search for our game there. Now unfortunately for me if I search for the game that I will be remaking which is Rodlan I will not find it. It's not on the Spriters resource because I assume it just was not a very popular game. However, I loved it. So I will be looking to find sprites elsewhere. So if we Google Rodland sprites, we will get a couple of images. On DeviantArt, someone had ripped some of the enemy sprites. It is unfortunately incomplete, but it's very useful for us. So we'll be using that later on. And on the English Amiga board, there is some other sprites. It, this is from 2005, this form post, but uh, it's still coming in useful today. From 2006, Method posted these player sprites with some uh, enemy sprites and some unassorted ones. We've got some background sprites from the stage one, that is, level one. Uh, we won't be using this however, we will be ripping them ourselves so that we get the entire image and not just the tile sheet. And here we've got some more unassorted sprites. So we are going to have to extract and rip sprites ourselves. So in order to do that we are going to be using a program called WinUAE which is a emulator so we're going to be emulating the Amiga and running the game and then extracting the sprites from that and to extract the sprites we'll be using a program called MapTapper. So if we load up WinUAE we will well I'm already I've already loaded this up but I will load up a state of we will go on to We'll go on to stage three. So here we go. Reload in stage three. Here we go. This is stage three. So you can just play through the game until you get to stage three or whatever game you're ripping from. And we will need to save it as a state, save state. So I already have done this, but I will do it again. So we'll click on to, we'll press F12 to open up the settings menu. Go across to miscellaneous. Uh, we'll click save state and we will just save it as stage 3.uss and we'll save it as an uncompressed save state. Now I won't go into how you set up an emulator or how you would get a ROM for the emulator. I'm sure you'll be able to find many videos that go into that so I, I don't need to spend my time explaining it here. So now we've saved our save state we are going to open up MapTapper. Now MapTapper is also a free resource so we will just open that up and there we go. Okay so what are we going to do with MapTapper? First I'll just resize it so we can see all of the tabs on the top right hand corner. Uh, just drag this bit out. This one. Okay if we look in the top left hand corner we need to enter in our save state so we can do that stage 3.uss is what we named it we'll click open and unfortunately for us it's just a bunch of nonsense we see down the bottom we've got some text which is nice to see however we can't do much with this if we scroll down maybe we'll see something that looks familiar but again, all of the colors are all messed up and there is just a bunch of garbled nonsense. Oh, there we go. We do see something. We've got some flowers. If you played Rodland before, you might recognize these flowers or here we've got some ladders and what looks like a door. What we're going to do is we're going to fix the colors so that we can see things much clearer. So on the left hand side you'll see it says bit planes and it's set to 1. We're going to increase that so that we can get some colour into these sprites. We'll just press the E and the D key until the colours look right. So here they're all red and that's not correct. We'll click it one more time. 
to three, those are not quite right. We'll click four and oh, suddenly those are what we're looking for. So I'll press shift and the down arrow and the cross arrow until we got them all on the top row. Now, if we change our rip width and our rip height so that we can get them all onto one nice row, we don't have to save the image with all of this nonsense below it. So in order to do that, we will take the number of sprites, which looks to be, uh, is, that, is that 15? And we will do 15 times 16, which is 172, I believe. And we can change the rip height to 16 because the the width and the height of these tiles are 16 by 16. So if we click process, oh no, my math has failed me. So we're gonna have to use the T and G until we've got all of those sprites. I will just trim off, there we go. So, what shall we do with this? Now we can save the graphics. We can just save this as a flower. Uh, flower. Well, we'll just save it as flower sprites. There we go, flower. And there we go, we've already ripped some sprites. Now there is multiple sprites here. If we click on grid at the top, we will see that they are split up into multiple sprites. So what shall we do next? If we change our rip size to 400 and 400, we can look for some more sprites. If we press the shift and the down arrow, we can skip 16 bits at a time until we find something we can rip. For the most part, it will be jumble nonsense because this contains every sprite from, oh, there we go, there's something, there's a red ball. Uh, that is from an enemy sprite, and here we go. Now we see some tiles for the background, it looks like. I'll just trim this down to 300 by 300 so we don't have so much nonsense in the background. Now I said earlier I will not be, oops, so it changes to 320 by 320 so we don't have the black borders. There we go. I said earlier that we will not be using these tile sheets. Instead we will be ripping the background as an entirety. So in order to do that, we are going to go across to the map search tab. Now here we will need to load in an image from the game. So I'm just going to load in an image of level three, click okay. And I'm just going to use this selection that it's provided me with to select a region from the game. And we can click match tiles and hopefully this region will be matched to these tiles here. Click match tiles and we've found some numbers. Now these numbers mean nothing for us but map tapper knows what to do with it so we'll click search for map and it spits out jackpot with an address. So we're going to go across to our map ripper tab and we will click on this down arrow here drop down menu and we see the same address. So if we click on that we will see that it has ripped our background. And we've also got a stage that comes, I believe this is stage four, this is the stage directly after stage three. Makes sense. So we'll change the height on the left hand side. We can use W and S to adjust the height until we've got oh we've got stages three through eight is what we've got. Now we don't need this garbled nonsense at the bottom, so I'll just trim that away. And we can save this map as stages 3 to 8. I'll just call it stages for now. So we've successfully ripped the stages and we've ripped some sprites. We ripped the flower and ladder sprites. But if we want to rip some backgrounds from later levels, which has a different background, we're going to need a save state from those levels. Now luckily I've already provided myself with a save state so I'll load the crocodile boss fight and there we go. So if we, if you need to get a save state from a later level you'll just have to get to that level and then you can save a state as we've done before. Save it as croc stage uncompressed. 
so we can read the data from it. I'll just replace this. And then we can go back to Map Tapper and select Croc Stage. Now, as you'll see, we've still got the background sprites. They're just a little bit garbled. So I'll press the up arrow key until they come back into focus. There we go. Perfect. Now, if we're going to rip the uh, background from the crocodile stage, we're going to need a screenshot of that. So here we go. We've got a screenshot of the background. I'll select a region from the background so that we can search for it and we'll just click match tiles and we should get our numbers back. Wait for this to finish and there we go. Oh no, we've got unmatched tiles, cannot continue. Now why has that happened? We've selected our region which is palm trees and some bricks but ah yes this is not that background these are not palm trees and those are those look like the right bricks but those are not the palm trees so we'll just scroll until we there we go there was some palm trees we'll just press the up and down arrows until we get them into focus and now we've got our bricks and we've got our palm trees we'll go back across to the map search function match these tiles once again we've got our numbers successfully search for map and hopefully we get a jackpot and a new address so we know what we're going to do we're going to go across the map ripper select the new address and we can just trim away all of this garbled nonsense by holding the s key and there we go we have successfully ripped our background for the crocodile stage now what if we want to rip some enemy sprites so we, we see we've got some small crocodiles and we've got these larger crocodiles which we need to defeat in order to move on to the next level so we can tell from this image that the crocodile is about four uh, four sprites wide and we know that a sprite is 16 pixels so we can we can do a rough estimate on how big this uh, crocodile sprite is and it's about it's yeah, too high two blocks high so we can enter in 64 which is 16 times 4 which is the width and then we can change the height to 32 which is around what we think the height is and already we can see what looks like a crocodile so if we press the up and the down arrows we might be able to get them into focus. Now, they don't seem to want to focus, so I'd assume my height might be wrong. We can click the W key in order to increase that height. Now, we don't want to increase the height, do we? We want to leave the height as it is. I think the width is what's wrong. Well, it might be the height as well. Let's go to 48 and change the oh god what's going on with the width there we go width is at 64 and we've got what looks like it's a little bit messed up but we've got what looks like a crocodile there we go i've gone to 48 oh i've changed the bit plane that's not what i wanted to do there we go so we're on 64 width and 48 height, which is what we approximated our crocodile sprite size to be. We've got one, but the one to the left is just out of focus. So we're going to change our height again until, oh yeah, never mind, I've gone down one pixel on the height and then I can scroll using the arrow keys and get that into focus. So you are able to rip these sprites individually. If I use the shift and the arrow keys, I can move it to the top and change the width on the rip width and the height to the rip height process. And there we go. We've got our enemy sprite, which we can save as a image. We'll just change this. I don't need to save this. I will rip the sprites later. We are, ah, here we go. We also see some player sprites. Now they're a bit garbled. So we will have to change these into something that we can rip. We'll just change the height. Now I think the height might be right at 48. 
Maybe it's the width. Ah, 32, that looks good. I'll change the height back down to 32. And there we go. 32 and 32, that is the height and width of our player sprites. So if we were missing any player sprites, we would be able to rip these as well. Okay, so I've spent some time ripping sprites and I've managed to get a good collection of all of the player sprites which were already ripped. I've added some extra frames, so we've got teleports and some dynamite and some small unassorted sprites that were not added. We've got the sidebar which was not available on the internet anywhere. And we've got our flowers and door. I found some extra ladders for Rit and Tam, which are the character names. I've got the enemy sprites, which include the missing monkey. And some extra frames on the shark I found. We've got the cutscenes in full, which I will be able to use later on. And the boss sprites. So these are all of the sprites for the various bosses in the game. Next we will be able to import them into Unity and cut them up so that they are individual sprites and not just one big sprite sheet.